Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Our top story is the weather. You're taking a look at our downtown Detroit Skycam. The forewarned weather team is tracking wind, making its way through southeast Michigan. Take a look at this video from Dearborn, where we're seeing the effects of the wind. The sign at a Dairy Queen on Ford Road came down because of those winds. And with the wind, some trouble. Power outages, but fortunately not as widespread this time around. DTE reports about 27,000 customers are without power. That's down from 35,000 we reported when you joined us at 6. Many of the outages are in Oakland County. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Will Jones. Glad you could be with us. I'm Pamela Osborne. We'll have what you can do if you see a down line in your area in just a moment. But for now, let's get over to forewarned meteorologist Ron Hilliard with the latest on the forecast. Ron. Pamela. Will, we have those gusty winds out there quite strong. You saw the damage in Dearborn. That's because some of the wind gusts that we had today was equivalent in strength and what we'd see from an EF zero tornado. Now I want to show you what's happening out there with our Zach track 4D radar. We have some light snow showers out there. Still a couple of rain showers in Wayne County. Things are going to be winding down though over the next couple of hours. Just a few showers out there and again, just a few lingering snow showers over towards Sanilac County. We have the wind advisory that continues until midnight. So for just under another hour, we have this in effect, but those winds will continue to be gusty overnight. I want to show you what's happening with those winds out there. The top gusts as high as 40 to 50 miles per hour in the northern communities, such as Oakland County, as you get up into Lapeer County, even Genesee County, as you get into Washtenaw Wayne County, so that's where we saw winds in the range of 50, 60 miles per hour, even as high as 67 miles per hour at Metro Airport. Very strong winds. Right now we're seeing them anywhere from about 15 to 25 miles per hour. Those gusts even higher around 30 miles per hour. We're looking into Mount Clements right now where we can see our sky cam shaking right now because of those strong winds out there. It's 37 degrees out there, mostly cloudy. Temperatures ranging from the mid 30s up to about the upper 30s across our area. We're going to see those lows falling down into the lower 30s. We can expect those winds to remain pretty gusty out there and some slick spots. And remember, you can download the new forewarn weather app. You can get the latest forecast as well as use the exact track radar right in the palm of your hands. You can get on your iPhone or your Android. All right, thank you, Ron. DTE Energy has several safety reminders if you do happen to lose power. Remember to stay 25 feet away from any down wires and don't touch anything those wires may be in contact with. Call DTE at 1-800-477-4747 if you do see a down line. Be aware that wires behind yellow tape may still be live. And we know a lot of people are making use of generators, but you should never use a portable generator inside your home. Now to our other top story. For the first time, we're hearing from another MSU shooting victim in her own words. That's right. Guadalupe Uapia Perez was released from the hospital earlier this month. Our Jacqueline Francis is live with a message she's now sharing and what we're hearing from the other survivors as well. Jacqueline. Yeah, these, as these students courageously recover, part of that process has been sharing their stories of what happened that night and where they are now. And for Guadalupe, even though she is out of the hospital, her life is forever changed. On February 13th, I came face to face with one of my biggest fears. These are the words of Guadalupe Uapia Perez. She was in class at Berkey Hall when the gunman shot her twice. In an online post, she writes, quote, I remember the sound of the first bullet shot. Fellow classmate and shooting victim Troy Forbush remembers it too, speaking at a rally earlier this week. What I initially thought to be someone accidentally dropping a heavy textbook quickly turned to, out to be the piercing sound of a handgun being fired at me and my peers through the doorway entrance in the back of our classroom. Troy was shot once in the I chest. The Guadalupe, or Lupe as her family calls her, was shot twice in the abdomen. As they bled out, both students made a similar call. I could feel my phone under me and maneuvered to grab it and call my mom at exactly 8, 18 p.m. In her post, Lupe writes, I remember calling my mom, afraid, so afraid that it would be the last time I talked to her. She also writes, I remember a classmate holding their shirt to my abdomen area. 
as Troy says, I will never forget looking into the eyes of a peer who had taken off his shirt to assist me in applying pressure to my fresh gunshot wound. Every survivor has their own road to recovery. For Lupe, who was released from the hospital exactly one month after the shooting, that physical recovery includes follow-up surgeries and remaining in Michigan until declared well enough to travel home to continue her care in Florida. There has been an outpouring of support for Lupe's family who have been by her side here in Michigan since the shooting. A GoFundMe for her family raised nearly a half a million dollars. Reporting live tonight, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline, thank you. An Oakland County woman is dead after a crash in Oakland Township. It happened around 8 this morning in the area of Rochester Road and Predmore Road. Deputies say 29-year-old Joy Turnbore was driving west on Predmore when she was hit by a box truck. She died at the scene from her injuries. The driver and passenger of the box truck are expected to be okay. On Detroit's east side, police need your help finding a missing teenager. 13-year-old James Bradford was last seen around 6 this morning at his home on Edmore Drive. Investigators say Bradford left his home without permission. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call Detroit police. It is a new era tonight for the UAW as members have selected a new president. Sean Fain has declared himself the winner of the union's first direct election. Fain is a member of the UAW Members United Reform Group and a local leader for Stellantis Parts Plant in Indiana. He will replace incumbent Ray Curry, who conceded the race. As president, Fain will be put to the test as the union pres prepares rather for contract bargaining with this year with Ford, GM, and Stellantis. The city of Detroit celebrates the grand opening of a new marijuana dispensary. High profile cannabis on Detroit's east side is the latest legacy certified adult use shop to open its doors. The limited recreational ordinance was approved by the city back in 2020. 34 licenses were granted in the first round to dispensaries across Detroit. High profile was awarded its license under the social equity category, meaning for residents of Detroit. While there were other folks who sued the city and fought the ordinance when it was equitable, we put together a great application. We fought for things that we wanted to see in the neighborhood while we weren't even making money here. We continued to invest in our neighborhoods, and we're going to continue to do that. Still more to come on Local 4 News at 11. Here's Priya Man. You know the name and you know the food. Well, now a change is coming to Olga's Kitchens and it's inspired by the founder. We'll explain.